Yes, welcome into Sports Pit. Betty and Insight today, Wednesday, March 22nd. It is Paulie and Teddy. Big game breakdown. Huge West Regionals. Gonzaga, West Virginia, Xavier, and Arizona. Cavs and the Nuggets. Also, Sweet 16 numbers. The books have been sharp. We'll talk about how the favorites have been doing so far. And we get out of here with the play of the day. Bad beats, bad bets. Bad for the books as always. Bad beats. The Bulls' playoff chances. Oh, mercy. They're up 15 with six minutes last night in Toronto. You had the, the fight between Ibaka and Lopez. All hell breaks loose. A 15 to nothing Raptors run. The Bulls are still up four in overtime. They blow that. They lose. The Heat won two. The Bulls are now, what, two games back of Miami. And this is strange but true. The Bulls had beat the Raptors 11 games in a row. Yeah, 11 straight times, even though Toronto was the better team for the majority of that era. But when you're up 15 with just over six minutes left, and you can't seal that deal. You know, uh, the Bulls' playoff chances get what they deserve. Jimmy Butler, DeMar DeRozan, I mean, duel of the season uh, last night. Both guys playing more than 50 minutes, battling back and forth. DeRozan got the best of it, 42 points uh, in all. But, you know, everyone's going to say that, oh, the, the Raptors were sparked by the ejections after the fight and all of that. No, that 15 to nothing run in the fourth quarter came like, Eight minutes of game time after uh, the fight had occurred, maybe Chicago lost some steam, but I'm not convinced that that was one of those situations where it was the fight that led to Toronto's rally. That's the way the pundits are going to call it, watching the game. I didn't sense it that way. But, of course, the Raptors got the win. The Bulls got the loss. But here in Vegas, the Bulls got the win. Raptors bet up from 6.5 to 7.5, never sniffed. A point spread cover. Same thing here. Horrible loss. The the Pistons took money against the Nets. Bet up from four and a half to five and a half. The other Lopez beats him. Brooke beats him on a buzzer beater. Oh yeah, and and the post game comments from Detroit, not positive moving forward. Again, you know, I mean, this is a team that has a chance still. They're on the cusp of that. You know, the seven eight spot in, in the East. Tobias Harris quote: It's frustrating. We came in here and expected to win. We needed this win, and they played like they needed it more than us. Uh, how about Stan Van Gundy after the game? Yeah, in the locker room, the guys have some stuff to say themselves. Somebody said, I hope this is a wake-up call. And I almost started laughing. I mean, we're 71 games in. A wake-up call? Come on. We've been doing this all year. Note, the Pistons are favorite tonight. Early money coming on Detroit as they play the aforementioned Chicago Bulls, who blew that big lead in Toronto last night. Somebody's got to win this one. It can't end in a tie. Yeah, yeah I hope Hoy, I bet I hope Hoiberg rented and didn't buy, by the way. Uh, bad bets. Memphis, New Orleans over 205 to 208. Never had a chance in this one. Pelicans covered their last four home games by 62.5 points. Yeah, all of a sudden, maybe it is time to take this New Orleans team more seriously than we did, at least after uh, the, the deal. Boogie last night, what, 41 points, 17 boards. Davis, 19 and 13. Uh, uh, really, uh, when you're covering, again, four games by an average of more than 15 points a game, you know, hey, betters should take notice. Meanwhile, the Memphis experiment of starting Vince Carter, well, maybe that came to an end last night. Carter, 34 minutes. He scored four points, and the Grizzlies were minus 27 with him on the floor. How about some NIT action? Other bad bet. Old Miss bet up from five to six against Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets win outright, and Georgia Tech's going to New York. So is TCU. Yeah, I mean, last night, uh, certainly uh, a lot of money on the Rebels uh, against the Yellow Jackets, but Josh Pachner, I mean, that was an impressive coaching job from a guy who I didn't necessarily have a ton of respect for uh, coming out of Memphis. ACC's covering point spreads, just in the wrong tournament. Uh, and of course, when we look at this tournament right now, the NIT, it's been carnage in these brackets. All right, in the final four, we got number six seed Georgia Tech and number four seed TCU in. Tonight, we have the number six versus the number eight seed, UT Arlington and Cal State Bakersfield. And then we have a number four seed favored over the number two seed because uh, Illinois can't host the game. The State Farm Center is otherwise occupied on Wednesday night. So UCF gets to host the regional final. Uh, against Illinois, but it's very possible that we will see all four seeds of the final four in NIT uh, as four seeds are lower, which is not something I expect to see when it comes to the final four for the big dance. Do you remember, was there a key injury to, remember Arlington? 
thought we could they could make some noise in March. They had a good resume. They won at St. Mary's. They got blown out in the semis of the Sun Belt Conference Tournament by Texas State. Well, how strange was that score when you see what they're doing in the NIT, too? I mean, it's I'm not surprised to see Arlington make a run like this. This is a veteran team. Senior-laden squad made some noise in the postseason last year, and they had that they had a bad game. Uh, you know, their opponent was draining, was raining threes against them. It, it can happen in a one-and-done format, but uh, I'm not surprised at all to see them make a run. And if I'm playing that game tonight, it would be Arlington and not Cal State Bakersfield. Bad for the books. They got it right here. Under money, Golden State, Dallas, under 209 and a half. Players bet it down to 207 and a half. We told you yesterday, 13 and one under the 13 and one under the last 14 games for the Warriors, eight in a row after the scare against Philly last Tuesday. They've held four straight opponents to 95 or less, and they weren't going to let Seth show up Steph in this one. No, and then again, you know, you have the uh, brothers Curry battling against one another at the NBA level, and uh, let's just say that Steph got the better of Seth <laughs> if you look. Uh, at the graphic right here, Steph with a plus 19 during his 29 minutes. Seth a minus 17 in his 27 minutes uh, of action. Pretty one-sided game for a Warriors team that's playing really good basketball right now as we hit the latter days of March. And the they bet the Clippers up from 8 to 10 against the Tankers. Tankers were down 30 at the half. Yeah, uh, and I mean, I, I can understand... Why they're betting the Clippers. I had Clipper money in my pocket uh, last night. I advised my clients to put Clippers in their portfolio. When you get a chance to bet against the Lakers, against a team that cares, <laughs> it's a way to make money at this stage of the campaign. Lakers not in good current form. West Regional's up next, San Jose on Thursday. We'll get to Gonzaga, West Virginia, and Xavier, Arizona. And we'll sneak in the Cavs and the Nuggets before we get out of here on Sports Bit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks. Back on Sports Bit, Betting Insight today. Follow us on Twitter at Pauly Howard at Teddy underscore covers. Time for big game breakdown as always live odds. Sportsbookreview.com. The early game Thursday, 430 Pacific, West Regional, San Jose, West Virginia, and Gonzaga, Zags 3.5, 148.5 the total. Has the major weakness for the Zags been shown? But was it hidden? Because not only is the WCC soft, but also slow. The Bulldogs don't like to be pressured. Two teams over the past month tried to chase them down with pressure. BYU, plus 21, down 14 early, won the second half 44-30. And the game, 79-71. Coors won any kind of a run. And they went out and got smashed by St. Mary's here in Vegas at the West Coast Conference Tournament a week later. Then they lost 105-89 to at home in the NIT against Arlington. BYU had nine steals. Gonzaga had 15 turnovers versus only eight assists in the game. Northwestern getting 10.5, down 22 early. Won the second half 53-41. to They had 11 steals. Gonzaga had 13 turnovers and 11 assists. What is the deal here, Teddy? Because you look, BYU and Northwestern, they stink in pressure. Well, that's the irony of it, okay? The fact that Gonzaga hasn't faced teams that give them a lot of ball pressure. And when they faced a couple of teams that because they trailed by margin early, went to a more aggressive approach and then basically collapsed in both of those games, the BYU game and the Northwestern game, unable to execute their offense against that pressure. Well, to me, that's something of a red flag. And look at the graphic. As you mentioned, BYU and Northwestern not even any good <laughs> at pressure defense. Well, you know, uh, the best defense Gonzaga faced in the West Coast Conference. They face St. Mary's. They don't do ball pressure. That's not what they do. Uh, it's not about turnover percentage. It's not about steal percentage. And heck, throw the graphic up with all the rest of the West Coast Conference up there. You know, you're not going to see. And the one team, Loyola, that presses, come on, Loyola doesn't do it with good players. There's a big difference between the press that Gonzaga is going to see against West Virginia than the press that they saw against Loyola Merriman. So this is a team that hasn't seen a lot of this, hasn't reacted particularly well to it when they have seen it. And, oh, now, by the way, one more graphic to throw up there. Look at West Virginia, number one in the country in turnover percentage, number three in steal percentage. Mark Few might have a matchup problem in this one. This is knockout information. If they solve the press, they're okay. But again, if they turn the ball over, they're going to get blown out, like they did in the if, they, if it happens in the like they did in the first two rounds. 
Remember, they, they stuck against South Dakota State, too. Gonzaga, number one in defensive efficiency, number one in effective field goal percentage, and 30th at clearing the boards on defense. A key because West Virginia's number six at grabbing offensive rebounds. I wasn't impressed with Karnowski. Uh, he didn't play well. Goss, uh, he didn't play well against Northwestern, and Goss struggled against South Dakota State. So we'll see how they do in this one on Thursday, too. But I'll tell you, this team... West Virginia, come on. What was the issue down the stretch? They couldn't score. Look what they did. They scored 86 against Bucknell, and they continued to make shots against Notre Dame. Sure. Uh, I mean, against Notre Dame, 27 of 54, so 50% overall. They had 8 of 14 from beyond the arc, 21 of 26 from the charity stripe. Five different players scored in double digits. And again, here on Sportsbit, we like to look at what the opposing coach says after the team played them. Here's what Mike Bray said uh, after West Virginia beat Notre Dame last weekend, quote, I didn't expect them to shoot it from outside as well. I thought we could play a little more zone and make them make more threes. And they made every big three-point shot. Carter's a big-time winner. What a stud guard he is. He's fabulous. He's just a veteran winner in college basketball. And the quote from Carter himself, all year we've been telling ourselves we got the best group of guards in the country, and we truly believe that. So when it's time for us to play, we got out there, we give it our all. It's worth noting, however, West Virginia, despite <laughs> their good shooting last weekend for the season, just number 110 in effective field goal percentage against Gonzaga's number one rated defense. And from the charity stripe, how about number 239 at hitting their free throw attempt? The supporting cast for Gonzaga is going to have to be huge in this one. This is the spot you like, right? Gonzaga in favor, and they haven't got the money yet. In general, the teams that have gone 0-2 ATS and 2-0 and straight up tend to be value-laden teams when it comes to the Sweet 16. Obviously, they went 2-0 and straight up. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in the Sweet 16. But teams like Gonzaga do not have a betting bandwagon to worry about right now. That being said, the Zags had a betting bandwagon all year long, uh, and they were the single best point spread team in the country for an extended stage this season. When we're talking about value-laden squads, Gonzaga not at or near the top of my list. All right, the late game, West Regional, game number two, live odds, sportsbookreview.com. Xavier and Arizona, Arizona 7.5, 145 the total. Here it is for Sean Miller and Arizona on a silver platter. They're playing in San Jose. Arizona fans will take over that arena. They win two games. They're in the final four in Glendale. So this is, And then they might face a, a Wisconsin or a South Carolina in that game too. So it's possible. Arizona, it's right, it's right there for them uh, right, right, with the opportunity they have in front of themselves. But first, Xavier. Chris Mack, one of the best jobs in the nation down the stretch, overcoming the injuries. Fourth Sweet 16 with Xavier, despite never being higher than a sixth seed. Uh, Xavier 0-3 in Sweet 16 games, but 2010, lost 101-96 against K-State. They were a five-point dog in overtime. 2012, they lost by five. They were catching six and a half against Baylor. 2015, lost by eight catching 10.5 against Arizona. So this team has been dangerous straight up and ATS. Well, exactly. I mean, some folks are going to make a big deal about Chris Mack holding up how many fingers for each 16, Sweet 16 game he's won, if you flash that picture again. Yeah, that's the goose egg, but that's not how we grade games here in Las Vegas. We don't care if they win. If you're tracking point spreads based on regulation results, something good betters do, Xavier 3-0 and against the spread in those games. Stepping up against Arizona and Baylor and Kansas State. They didn't win any of them in straight-up fashion, but they've been good enough to hang tough, good enough, well-coached to hang tough, probably not enough talent uh, to win that game in straight-up fashion. And look, might well be the same story for Xavier again this season. This squad had Final Four talent, legitimately. Miles Davis only played two games. They had a personal issue, uh, left the team. They lost Edmund Summer to an injury back in early February. And after that, things fell apart. They went 0-6 straight up, 0-6 against the spread. A nasty cycle. Finally bounced out of it with a couple of wins against DePaul, and Mac kept coaching. Next thing you know, they're beating Butler in the Big East tournament, and then beat the spread by 55 points against Maryland and Florida State in the big dance last weekend. Do not sell the Xavier Musketeers short. Yes. Now, this is a unique matchup problem for Xavier because the Musketeers don't face a lot of size in the Big East. Now you're going against the seven-footers. Markinen, stud, five, uh, 15 points per game, seven rebounds per game, 
And Dusan Ristich, 10 points per game and five and a half rebounds per game. So the seven footers are going to give them, they're going to be a lot of trouble down low. We know they have a ton of talent, but they weren't always playing hard enough. And let's go back, roll it back, Sportsbit, way back machine. Remind you what we told you back then. This is from Sportsbit, February 8th, a Sean Miller quote. The word pro is thrown around way too much in Arizona because of the great history of our program. We have guys who think they're NBA players and they can't guard the ball. Not, like, not only are you not getting picked by an NBA team, but you're not getting invited to a camp. No one's going to take a chance on a guy who can't guard the man in front of him. And same thing when the shots go up. You can't block out right now in February and keep your man from second shots. Nobody's picking you. Just because Jefferson got picked doesn't mean you're getting picked. You have to earn it every game, every day, end quote. 10-1 and one since then. They only lost to UCLA and they got revenge by beating them in the Pac-12 tournament. Great quote from Miller, and you saw what happened as a result. Sure, and, and again, you know, we don't always, this show isn't about patting ourselves on the back and this is what we got right and this is what we got wrong. We're going to grade ourselves in our play of the day and we're going to shoot to provide you guys with quality information that you're not going to find from other sources. And this is one that we get to pat ourselves on the back a little bit because, because that quote, that game, <laughs> where basically Sean Miller read his team the riot act since that time, as you mentioned, the only loss came to the Bruins, and they got the revenge for that. This team is playing at an extraordinarily high level right now. They're playing in a friendly environment. They have an easy draw. Arizona is in very good position to extend their run. But I'm telling you, don't sell this Xavier team short. I'm certain Xavier's going to give them a battle. The question is, can they do it for the full 40 minutes? Up next, we'll get to uh, how sharp the marks have been in Sweet 16 and the Cavs and the Nuggets on Sports Bit. Betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Research before you bet. Be sure to check out SBR Picks for the best game predictions, breakdowns, and much, much more. Back on Sports Bit, Betting Insight today, Paulie and Teddy. We'll get to the Cavs and Nuggets coming up. How sharp have the markets been so far, Teddy? A big run by the chalk last year. Yeah, but over the long term? How about this? These are numbers courtesy of the gold sheet. All right, Sweet 16 favorites. Over the last 146 games, 73 favorites, 73 underdogs. That's pretty efficient market. Of course, uh, underdogs cleaned up 2013, 2014 in the round of Sweet 16. Each year, the dogs go 6-2 and two against the number. The last two years, it's been all chalk. 6-2 and two in 2015, 7-1 and one against the number last year for the favorites. So we've seen a big switch. Uh, over the you know over just you know two years of big dogs and two years of big favorites covering long term there's really no trend to talk about it's a very efficient marketplace big game breakdown continues Cavs and the Nuggets live odds sportsbookreview.com Nugget uh, Cavs three and a half on the road 229 the total altitude often a problem at Denver shouldn't be for the Cavs only second game in six nights for James, Kyrie, and Love, but instead of traveling straight to Denver after playing the Lakers on Sunday, they stayed in L.A. until uh, Tuesday. But even though the Cavs were already fresh, they still trailed by 11 in the fourth. Their defense stinks, and their defense in the paint is a disgrace. NBA defense points per 100 possessions post-All-Star break. Look at that. The Cavs are 29th. The Lakers are 30th. Now, I know LeBron sat out three of the 14 games but this, the, the, the worst NBA full season D of the, the past 10 years was the 09 Sacramento Kings. The Cavs are right there with that. They're worse than the 2009 Sacramento Kings right now. And again, these are stunning numbers for a team that we're talking about as favorites to win the title. When you're allowing 111.5 points per 100 possessions, this isn't a game or two, all right? This is, an, what is it, 14 games since the All-Star break? And all right, LeBron sat three of them, big deal. Uh, all right, the, when you talk about the worst full season defense of the last 10 years was the Kings at 111.9, and here are the Cavs at 111.5 right now since the break. I mean, this is a team right now that doesn't even have a clue on the defensive end of the court, as this picture clearly shows. Nobody's there. They better have a clue tonight, I'll tell you what. Denver is looking more and more like the likely eight seed in the West. And they are very quickly becoming a team that no one wants to play, Paulie. Look at the offensive numbers. All right, points per 100 possessions since the All-Star break. Rockets are number one. Nuggets are number two. When you look at the net, offensive and defensive efficiency since the All-Star break, they're the Rockets at number one, the Heat, the Warriors, the Spurs, all teams playing really good basketball. 
there's Denver, number five uh, on that list, despite, Polly injuries that continue to hold back their continuity. That's right. Chandler missed four games. Gallinari, three games. Nikola, jo Nikola Jokic also missed two in that span. And Denver on one of the best two-game losing streaks any team's had all season. Battled Houston to the wire at home. Lost 109-105. And then they hard and laid it in with two seconds left to beat them, 125 to 124. Didn't have Chandler or Gallinari either game, which might have been enough to push them over the hump. Now, will they go tonight, Teddy? What does Malone say? Well, Malone's saying, quote, hopeful is the word I'd use. We'll have to wait and see how those guys' continued rehabs go and how they're feeling. For both these guys, it comes down to whether they're comfortable enough and confident enough to go out there and play at a high level. And that's an interesting point you make, Polly. You talk about one of the best two-game losing streaks the team has had all season. The fact that they went to the wire twice with the Rockets without Chandler and Gallinari, that's a confidence boost, even though they came up short in those ball games. And, uh, I mean, you know, right now we talk about Jokic. And this is a guy who's got, what, eight double-doubles in his last ten games. I really wonder if Cleveland has a defensive answer for this guy. He has been a machine. He's been a beast since the trading deadline deal. Yeah, money time, play of the day. Let's get back on track. Back to Gonzaga, West Virginia. What are we doing? Yeah, let's get in play in the Sweet 16, Pauly. It's time, game number 815-816. And let's take a look at Gonzaga and West Virginia under the total 148 and a half. And there's no urgency here. Your general strategy following a big run of overs like we saw last weekend is you want to bet overs early in the week this week. And you wait until closer to tip-off for the unders. We've seen some over money come in here. And I would expect we'll see a little bit more. No urgency, but there's just not much breathing room in any direction against the West Virginia defense. And Gazaga, number one in the nation in defensive efficiency. Look for the Zags and Mountaineers say under the total. Gonzaga, West Virginia, under is our play of the day. All right, very good. Thursday, East Regional from Madison Square Garden. A friend of the show, Brian Mahoney, tweeted, can't catch a break. They have to sit through the Knicks 41 times with the home games, and they couldn't get Duke or Villanova. Uh, so we'll do the East Regional and then the Google Hangout, 8 o'clock Pacific as well. We'll talk to you then on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Mm -hmm.